Sheldon Keefe. Uh, introduced as New Jersey Sheldon Devils Keith, head coach. no longer burdened by these weird photos because he's going to go <laughs> work in New Jersey. Dude. And <laughs> he's going to, you know, he's got a great hockey team to coach. He's got lots of stress and worry and all the things that comes with the job, but he's got a few less personal worries because not everybody's going to be up in his business in Newark or wherever he settles out there in no. New Jersey. Dude can go to a, a New York Jets game or Giants game somewhere in East Rutherford or a New York Red Bulls game, whatever he wants to do, I guarantee very few photos will be taken of that man. Good for him. He's earned his peace. He has earned his peace, and he's earned the team he's taken over. You know, one thing that stood out to me in, in listening to Sheldon's words at, at the opening press conference in New Jersey was just how he's never coached a team that wasn't trying to win a championship, which, you know, it sort of sounds like an obvious thing, but in his position like when you're a coach getting hired into a situation sometimes you're taking over a team at rock bottom sometimes you're taking over a team that you know is a project stepping in there and that is going to take a few years before it's really trying i mean you're always trying to win every game but before the the real ambition of the organization is to win and so you know it, it really does sound like the job was his to to have right from the get-go and that Sheldon had to work through things with his wife and his kids and decide, am I ready to work again? Is this the right place? And the more he kind of went through that process and, you know, they went down and had a kind of a site visit there and got to meet some people on the ground with the organization. He came to realize that this is a perfect opportunity and it's, it's hard for me to see it any other way from afar because, you know, he's, he's had a lot of success as a regular season coach, the Leafs under his tenure, well documented have not had a ton of success, but he's taking over the kind of team that, you know, we could be talking about as a Stanley cup contender, maybe as soon as next year, I know they had a big step back this season uh, from where they were two years ago. But, you know, when you look at the core of young talent there and I think a pretty well run front office that, that you know, doesn't make a lot of mistakes that will have some opportunity to make decisions on players this summer that could probably look forward to being a little healthier next year, because certainly part of the devil's last season was just key injuries to, to players like Dougie Hamilton for, significant chunk of time that it's hard to replace that when you've already, you know, walked that someone like Damon Severson out the door the previous summer. Uh, so, you know, they, they took some, some blows on, on the blue line and obviously have really young talent, Simon Nemich there and, and, and Luke Hughes, but you know, it, it's a long way of getting to the point that, you know, Sheldon's, I mean, this team is going to be going to have the same expectations and ambitions as the Leafs would have when, when he was working there, except, you know, it's a fresh start for him. It's a fresh look at new players and, and, you know, pretty new environment for him to go apply his trade. All right. Um, anything you, else? Oh, go ahead. Well, the other thing that stuck out to me, is, I'm sure you saw his farewell video in Toronto. He actually detailed, he detailed I was going to how ask that, that came next. together. Yes, please and, talk. Cause that was what I was going to ask next. Well, cause I heard all this, there's like this weird speculation. He'd like made it days ahead of time and had like a professional crew film. It. And I was like, I never, so I like, never you? heard. I never saw any of that, and that clearly oh, looked I, like that clearly looked like you know spur of the moment. We knew it was. He probably figured it was going to happen, and then he was wherever he was, and he said, "You know what? Let me just do a personal thing. Here's my phone. Let's do it." It didn't look like a professional thing. It just well, looked like a spur was, of the moment. There was thing. a lot of nonsense of like that locally, and I that never made sense to me. I was like, "No, no this way. looks like." I mean, we all have pretty powerful cameras in our pockets now. I mean, cell phones. Uh, or, you know, it's like carrying around a digital camcorder back in the day. Anyway, the, uh, he, he told the story and basically he kind of figured it was coming. He had a restless sleep the night before he was, you know, contacted by Brad Living, called in for a meeting and he sort of decided he wanted to do this. And maybe, you know, I'm sure he thought a little bit of his messaging and what he would want to say. And he thought it was an important part of closure. And so he said he went right from the meeting from Brad Living where he got fired. He went to that spot that he called his happy place near his home. Uh, you know, lived in one of the suburbs of Toronto on the lake and, you know, spoke from the heart. I think that's why so many people connected with that message because it did come out, you know, within a couple hours or not yeah. even maybe within an hour of his firing officially being announced by the team. And maybe that, maybe that timing is why everyone thought it was like this big stage production. But I think he just literally spoke from the heart right after getting the news. And then he said he took his wife, Jackie to lunch <laughs> and that was it. And And he just figured that that was one way to, have closure on his situation with Toronto. It would keep him from having to do all this media in after the fact, like he kind of said his, his piece, if you want to say it, or he kind of explained where he was at and was, was stepping back from the public spotlight. As it turns out, it was only two weeks, but 
he didn't know at that time he'd be back working so soon because he did have term on his contract. And anyway, I just thought that was interesting and maybe something we see more people in his situation do in the future. Cause I, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of that, especially so quickly. Um, and I think honestly, it, it was a, it was, I don't think it was done with like a big PR spin, but I think it was a brilliant PR move because it's about the classiest way you can leave a situation. And I'm sure this is not on Sheldon's mind today, obviously, but I actually think it creates a circumstance where he could one day be brought back in the future, whether it's 10 or 15 years down the road. Like it's, he, he left the bridge was not burned on either side yeah. at the end, at the end of that relationship. And he's still a very young coach and, you know, I bet his best days are still ahead. That's a, that's a pretty safe thing to be predicting. Uh, circle back to this episode in about five to seven years when the rumors of Sheldon Keefe, should he return to the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, circle the wagons. I mean, the Paul Maurice went back to Carolina. Cito Gaston came back to the Blue Jays. Lindy Ruff has just been hired back in Buffalo. You know, not those aren't perfect parallels. But, you know, if Sheldon goes on and wins a cup or cups elsewhere and he's a distinguished coach and one of the best in the games and the Leafs are still trying to get it right in 10 or 15 years, it would just not surprise me at all if you started to see that those kind of rumors go around. I mean, that's what's old is new again. That's how it is. I've seen Michelle Therrien and Claude Julien coach the Canadians twice. It's entirely possible. Exactly. Twice. And, I still can't believe and, that happened. Jeez. I just feel like because it's such a classy way to go out too. And like he, even yeah, today it was so well-spoken at his introductory press conference. I mean, he seems like a new man again, because he can know he can have a coffee with Nico. He's here in the next few weeks and no one is going to bother him. They're just going <laughs> to go do their job and, and get working on trying to bring the cup to Jersey. Yeah. Wherever I'm trying to think what's like, what's the, I mean, then again, whenever we travel, I imagine for you, it's, you're not trying to have dinner in New Jersey. You'd much rather have it in Midtown if you have to ever be at a Devils game. But there's some maybe good they... restaurants in Jersey, man. Oh, okay. So I don't know. I I tried not to hang out too near, long in Jersey during the near time the rink. I, was I went to the Dinosaur Barbecue a fair bit over the years. They have a dinosaur barbecue in Jersey, just down the street from the arena, man. Oh come on! I would have gone. You're all being snobby. Like I ran into New York City. And you ran well, I'm right just past, trying. I'm, I was just but trying you ran to right past the dinosaur barbecue. Dinosaur barbecue is to Manhattan. Oh! Dinosaur barbecue in Syracuse is elite. I would have there's gone also that some, one in Jersey. There's also some like old school kind of restaurants that I've been to over in New York that are like really good. Okay. Well, uh, don't sleep next, on New Jersey. I will. I, I will never sleep on New Jersey ever again. 